William uh, Randolph. Is it Randolph or Rudolph? Whatever his name is. And um, his whole perspective and outlook and how he, how the, and he explains how the videos and everything. It's like, about. it's like all, all you can do is spread something that happened three years ago. You ain't got nothing new because I preach against sin, because I preach against unrighteousness, because I say that homosexuality is wrong. Is all of that necessary? Because, because I say that we as a church should not support homosexuality. So now y'all, now folk want to go and attack me and want to pull up stuff on me and try to drag me and expose me. You can't expose me. You didn't have me come on here. He didn't have me come on here and to interrupt it. Yes, it did. Because what I did, when I did it, I did it unapologetically and intentionally. Because as I've stated before, when I sent my videos and my photos to my then fiance, to my then fiance, at that time, I was not in the church. So my thing is, what is the exposure? Can we have some kind of class and some kind of discretion? So, yeah. so what are you exposing? Okay, yeah, I sent the pictures. I sent the videos three years we ago. Can have some kind of class and some kind of discretion? What are you yeah. getting out of exposing? What are you trying to do? Because at the end of the I'm day, I'm going to still preach against homosexuality. But again, why? Wrong is wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't make excuses for my wrong. I'll tell anybody when I sent, when I sent, when I sent my pictures to my then fiance and my videos to my then fiance, I was not in the church, had no, had no desire to be in the church. And could care less. And I sent them unapologetically. And I sent them intentionally. Because that was my thing. So you can't expose me. Point blank period. And then my thing is. Who wants to keep showing somebody's dingling on their post? Because they like what they see. Evidently you must like what you see. Because I'm not going to have nobody's dingling or, or, or vagina in my phone posted and everywhere. Look, 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 look. For what? Even though it was my fiance that I sent them to. <laughs> oh, you send your dick pics out to people all over. No, I wasn't. No, I didn't. Get your facts straight. Black folk, y'all talk about stuff you don't even have facts about. You don't even have facts about it, but you, but you, but you, but you commented and you don't even know the whole story. Like this, this bishop out here talking about homosexual, but he out here sending dick. No, I didn't. I ain't out here sending I sent that to my fiance at that time who was out of town and wanted her fiance who I was screwing at the time because I wasn't in church. Didn't want to have to do with the church. Didn't have no title. Wasn't walking in no office. I was playing the keyboard to go home, get the paycheck. That's all I was doing. And so she was out of town. She was out of town. That's fine. She was out of town working in Georgia. I was here in North Carolina. And she wanted her man. So she couldn't have me. So she said, send me some video. Send me some pictures. And she, because I was her man, I sent them. The that was our stuff. private moment. And so when we were no longer uh, together, we, we just decided we were going to be friends. We moved on. Three years later, I ended up getting married. Then uh, that fell off. And then she got married with me, went in the iCloud, found those photos with, between my, me and my fiance three years prior and put them out on the internet. I sent a dick pic. I did it intentionally because it was my female. That was my lady. Who asked for them at the time? Hello? And I don't 
don't make it and I will tell anybody who asks, yeah, I sent them to my fiance. Because she asked for them. And she sent me some of hers. Because that's what we did. So now because, because now, so now because I'm preaching and saying we need to get delivered, now you want to go and pull out, pull dirt on me and go to, and go to these bloggers and tag folk and say, well, he preaching against homosexuality, but look at what he did. Okay, just look, okay, okay, look, look. Look at look at the look at the connotation. What I did. They just want to talk about the video. Oh, he's supposed to be this. Oh, he's supposed to be a bishop, and he's sending. They don't want to talk about where I was at when those things were happening. For those of you all that keep what well, you showing your blank blank blank. Let me ask my fiance. Look, my fiance then had a fetish for eating her man from the behind, and she wanted to do that to me. But I was uncomfortable with it. That's why we parted. Actually forcing me to eat their That's butt. That's why we didn't get married. Because that was her thing. That wasn't my thing. That's what she liked. That was what I liked. So if we were going to get married, I wasn't going to, that was, that was going to be an issue because that's, that's not something that I enjoy. But that's something that she did. She asked me to send her the And I did because that was my fiance. That was my fiance. Or whatever. Not only that, not only that, not only that, hello, not only that, me and my then fiance are still friends right now. And I had her, I, I text her when all this happened, and I had her to text me back. And she and she co-signed and affirmed the fact that no, you ain't gay. I asked you to send me that picture. I asked you to send me those videos. No, I'm, I'm laying it all on the line because I'm sick of it. For those of you all that keep what you showing your blank, blank, blank. Let me ask my fiance. Look, my fiance then had a fetish for eating her man from the behind. And she wanted to do that to me. But I was uncomfortable with it. That's why we parted. Your dick pics out to people. All of, no, I wasn't. No, I didn't. Get your facts straight. Black folk, y'all talk about stuff you don't even have facts about. I woke up to men to pain. And um, that had never happened to me when I was getting molested. And we're now, I'm talking about what happened to me. I'm a teenager now. Yeah. And so that I woke up to that. Um, but things were so bad at home with my parents and that I, even after that, they violated me. And I remember because I didn't know what was happening. I remember I went to the bathroom and there was so much blood. It was black. And I remember calling my mom in there. I, I never do that because it ain't it. I want to say the names of the other ones that was actually forcing me to eat their butt. I'm telling you the truth. This is the, this is the truth. So I don't care. I mean, it's, um, like I said in my family, like most of us, all of us was molested. I remember giving myself to a few of my cousins so they stopped messing with my sister. I'm talking about we were eight, seven, eight, nine years old. Um, then my first relationship was actually with one of the people that was now we I'm gonna say molestation but it wasn't anything where he was forcing me to do anything by this time it was it was, it was just what we were doing but he was older so I guess you can call it that but I, I'll call everything else molestation I want he was like, I don't know what it mm -hmm. so then that I can say that I couldn't say that before and I think people when they're struggling in their own sexual identity they 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 do some things and, and some weird things in their head and they create this this some crazy man. But I was able to sit down with the person that I was having sex oral sex with and one time anal sex with me putting my peen in their bread basket. And, and now that he has a wife and everything, and that was a relationship because he became like a 
uh, mentor protect the type kind of going on and then he moved and left and that's I had my first heartbreak by a man so I was in a relationship with my cousin who my second who, third cousin who we were in a sexual relationship I would never say his name I, I never do that because it ain't it I want to say the names of the other ones that was actually forcing me to eat their butt I want okay, you to hear you know what I'm what Larry, you, you, he has a wife and everything and that was a relationship because he became like a uh, mentor protect the type kind of going on and then he moved and left and that's I had my first heartbreak by a man so I was in a relationship with my cousin who my second who, third cousin who we were in a sexual relationship I would never say his name I, I never do that because it ain't it I want to say the names of the other ones that was actually forcing me to eat their butt I want okay, you to hear you know what I'm what Larry, you, you, I've been over six of them and you can imagine uh, young boys don't wash so there okay. is that. Yeah. My, my, my daughter sitting right here. You need to hear this because we ain't people ain't gonna tell them. My, my daughter, my daughter sitting right here. You need to hear this because we ain't people ain't gonna tell the people that was now we I'ma say molestation, but it wasn't anything where he was forcing me to do anything. By this time, it was, it was it was just what we were doing. But he was older, so I guess you can call it that. But I, I'll call everything else molestation. I what he was doing, I don't know what it is, but it was a relationship. Mm -hmm. So then that I can say that I couldn't say that before, and I think people when they're struggling in their own sexual identity, they 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 do some things and, and some weird things in their head and they create this this some crazy man but i don't have a relationship with bloomer well then create one nigga that's a bitch <laughs> well i'm saying why would you refer to i need to build a relationship with them i'm not I'm, so, that's what i did with all of my kids i mean it's part of the healing process so what i'm talking about something that happened for long periods of time like they with me this is a one off yeah, and it wasn't. You can get over that. Get over it. Go heal. I'm not. I'm, so, that's what I did with all of it. But I was able to sit down with the person that I was having sex, oral sex with, and one time anal sex with me putting my peen in their bread basket. And, and now that he has a wife and everything, and that was a relationship because he became like a uh, mentor, protect the type kind of going on. And then he moved and left. And that's I had my first heartbreak by a man. So I was in a relationship with my cousin, who my second, who, third cousin, who we were in a sexual relationship. I would never say his name. I, I never do that because it ain't it. I want to say the names of the other ones that was actually forcing me to eat their butt. I want okay. to bend over six of them, and you can imagine a, young boys don't wash. So there okay, is that. Larry, Larry, my daughter sitting right here. You need to hear this because we ain't people ain't gonna tell them. I'm eating out of the, out of the yeah. hairs, the dingo berries. Larry, people going to want you to wear a mask every time they need you uh, to leave. I was a child. We don't need all the beach yeah. right now. Yes, it was. I said, I was a child. You know, and then they and they maybe do that. Eat. They would say, eat, eat my egg. Eat my egg. You know, lick it. No, let me say lick it. And so that that became, which actually became, made me develop a desire to to eat to toss salad with the guy that I was with that was older me than my cousin Lena that became a thing we did that's how I first penetrated him so because it became a, a world it became a thing um, like I said I thought that I would just take the underwear put them on put on my regular clothes come down and show that my print was not showing that's not how he wanted me to do it I had mm -hmm. to go into his bathroom change into the underwear come back out with my with the underwear on no pants mm -hmm. Mm. And he would basically look to see if he could see the print. Mm. One particular mm. time when I was walking away to go back into the bathroom to change, he basically pulled uh, the Under Armour down, mm. put me on his bed, and put his face in my tail. Hold on. Hold on. He did what? He pulled the underwear down. He put me on his bed and put his face in my tail. From that moment, that's when he started having the conversation. Well, maybe we should just do something to see if you're still attracted to guys. The first time 
that he made any type of sexual advancement, it was not penetration. It Mm -hmm. was him putting his face in my tail. After a long time of having that same conversation, I basically gave in. He got what he wanted. The second time that happened. Now, mind you, every time this happened, I felt so convicted because... Right, mm-hmm. and but it was, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And so, so I, there's so many different examples of that that I can go into, but right. I, the meat of it is this. Mm-hmm. He, um, and and it's funny because I actually heard him say this. It's this interesting. I heard him say this on another platform. Mm-hmm. Um, he was talking about T. S. Madison, the interview, interview with the four four guys or the four. It was like four blocks. I watched the mm-hmm. that he did. Yeah, he was and, one T.S. Madison and then two of T.S. Madison's uh, friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting how this happens. He was he was saying that when he was a kid, that there was a guy that he was in a relationship, he was in a relationship with in his mind. Mm-hmm. And he said at the time, he wasn't able to rationalize that he was being molested. He said because, because it was because of how the relationship looked to him he wasn't able to know it as molestation but he said now mm-hmm. at with the with the evolved mind and with the uh adult mind he's able to see that he was manipulated and it was molestation by definition and for me for him to be able to make that rationalization about his own abuse that tells me that he knew exactly what he was doing with me at the time that tells me that's what he was doing like he he knew he was he was playing on the my dad not being there. He was playing on that. He was playing on my dad not being there. And I, I can I can remember him even telling me mm. that, you know, I, I don't need my dad. Like because I, I remember we would I have remember you telling me that. I was gonna yeah. hopefully you bring that out. Yeah, we would like, we would have conversations about how, you know, I wanted my dad in my life and I, I was so angry about it. And he would tell me like, you know, I should just act like he don't, doesn't exist. I, I should act like my dad doesn't exist because I have him. You know what I'm saying, and and I, sh- I shouldn't, I shouldn't even act like he exists. You know what I'm saying? Be mm. like telling me that I don't need him. And that was the furthest thing from the truth, man. The furthest thing from the truth. Like me and my dad, we've been good for years now. At this point, like we we had we had those hard conversations that we needed to have, and that's my guy now. Like we talk regularly. Mm-hmm. We talk regularly. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, it was it's, it's crazy like to, to think back on how all of that played out man but that's what he was doing like he was manipulating a young boy a fatherless young boy that needed his dad in his life and he played on that I, I, I can remember too there was a time that we were in uh, we were in Morris, Morrisville like mm-hmm. in Charlotte mm-hmm. in Charlotte Morrisville Mm-hmm. And that's that's what his second accuser said. His situation happened in Morrisville. No, not not Morrisville. Not Morrisville. Morrisville is in Charlotte. Morrisville. Okay. That's a that's a whole nother scenario. That's yeah. That, that's that. I can go off on another tangent with that. Okay. But um, in Morrisville, it was a, he had a church engagement, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm being there, and we're walking through. Uh, he had to get some stuff from Walmart. We're walking through Walmart, and I remember him telling me, he said, um. He said, Tracer, your personality, he said, the right person could manipulate you into doing anything. This was before anything had ever occurred. Wow. But he told me, he said, we said, your personality type, anybody could manipulate you. And for me, like looking back, like I said, I feel like everything that happened was premeditated. Was premeditated. He saw me, he saw me as, as easy prey basically mm-hmm. and i think um the only reason that it didn't go further than where it went is because of who i am at my core i'm, I'm not a gay man like i, I don't have to defend that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like I, I i'm not gay you know what i'm saying this is just something that happened to me as a result of but i'm very clear on what my sexuality is i'm I, I don't, i'm not i'm not conflicted about that at all you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying my first relationship was actually with one of the people that was 
now we I'm gonna say molestation, but it wasn't anything where he was forcing me to do anything. By this time, it was it was, it was just what we were doing. But he was older, so I guess you can call it that. But I, I'll call everything else molestation. What he was, if I don't know what this turns out to be true. This is going to be one of the biggest stories in the black church since the fall and the disgrace of Bishop Eddie Lee Long. And Larry, let me say this, and let me say this to your attorney, there is no cease and desist that will, as long as there's life and breath in my body, I will be saying your name and talking about these allegations. And there will be no cease and desist that will stop me. Ever. Let's get that straight. You can send it to a hotel. You can send it to a motel. Send it to a church. You can send a sheriff. <laughs> Whatever, my whomever, you need to send. I promise you that Sir William will not stop. I, I promise you, as long as I can inhale and exhale, if I have to do it with an oxygen tank and stretched out flat on my back, Baby, I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about it until we get to the bottom of it. I'm going to talk about it until the boys come forward. I'm going to talk about it until we totally and completely exhausted to de- uh, down to every address and all of the information into every allegation and want to know who, ha- how many of them did you have sex with? How did you have sex with them? At what time did you have sex with them? What did you do to them? What mouth part? What body part? Whatever. I want the full and total and complete details. I promise you. I promise you, I'm not going to turn it loose. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be like Victor Cousins. I'm not going to be like uh, 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 E. Dewey Smith. I'm not going to be like Matthew Stevenson. I'm not going to be like any of them. And I'm going to walk. <laughs> I'm going to walk and I'm going to go around Atlanta and the country freely. And I'm not going to be afraid. Because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but one of love and of power and of a sound mind. I'm going to walk this I'm, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep all of them as anonymous as I possibly can until and allow the court and allow the court to take its course. But eventually we're going to have to call some names and we're gonna have to call dates times and places so i'm i i just i think that if we have allowed and if the church has allowed and isn't that wouldn't that be the plan of the devil to allow someone to come in and look like us and act like us and have the sound of the church and infiltrate us and actually be a demon and a hound sent from hell and that would be camouflaged and to be a person that is you know for and and professing Christ and professing God where do you go to church who do you pay your tithes to I what 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 do you what do you do what affiliation do you have besides going over to Dennis uh Dennis Martin and June Martin who who can you be affiliated with that you haven't paid off or that you haven't given some major money to who it who who is it who is it who who are you besides Bernard that you are held accountable to is there anybody is there anybody that you that you that you can be held accountable to? Is there anybody that can that can pull pull your coattail? You didn't pull. Nobody could pull your coattail. So yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to move forward. We got now. Everybody wants to say, oh, this is just an allegation. Well, it's an allegation of child molestation. It's an allegation of homosexuality. It's an allegation that is exactly a a, a, a paramount and. A 
against what you were supposed to be standing for. So how could this be named among you? How could this be the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Isaiah said to lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and cry loud and spare not. Show, show them, show you. We going to show you. <laughs> oh, we're going to show you, Reverend. We're going to show you, Dr. Dr. E. We're going to show you your transgressions. We're going to show you the error of your ways. So we're going to wait. We're going to wait and we're going to see if the accusers and, and what have come forward, these, 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 uh, uh, these uh, screenshots and these other information and what have you and all of these uh, people that are are said that are going to be called to to witness and we're going to see I wasn't jealous of anybody I wanted them to be to know and be aware VH1 pulled TI and Tiny Show they pulled it in the midst of an allegation. It ain't no, but ain't no proof of nothing but in the midst of an allegation. So if we have people that needed a check so bad that even that they could turn and look another way in the midst of this, then God bless them. I certainly understand it. And I hope that, that it was a sizable or decent amount to justify it. Uh, oh, oh God, uh, was it was it Anthony or Spencer? When one of the guys said that he could steal to this day, to that very day, he could still smell Bishop Long's cologne. He could still smell. I, 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 I don't want to it to be true that some guys' lives and uh, uh, psychological well-being is messed up and, and that they're damaged because of somebody else that claimed to be a man or woman. If oh, this turns out to be true, this is going to be one of the biggest stories in the black church since the fall and the disgrace of Bishop Eddie Lee Long. The minister is Bishop Eddie Long of the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church outside Atlanta. Three young men now are suing Bishop Long, accusing him of enticing them with money, cars, clothes, and expensive jewelry in exchange for sexual favors. These are just allegations at this point, but what makes them so startling is that Bishop Long is leader not just of an African-American megachurch with 25,000 members, but a major opponent of same-sex marriage and homosexuality. Here's some of what he's preached in the past about gays and lesbians. And the problem today, and the reason why society is like it is, is because men are being feminized and women are becoming masculine. And everybody knows it's dangerous to enter and exit. You cannot say... I was born this way. I don't care what scientists say. You can be converted. You were not born that way. Let me pray with you. Let me tell you, don't you be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. For the, well, I don't know what I am. Johnny, take your clothes down. I'll show you. Who you when I was being condemned from the four corners of the earth, I had a moment, I had a moment where I wanted to kill myself and was ready. What kept me It's not a scripture. What kept me is that every time I showed up here, you were here. If this turns out to be true, this is going to be one of the biggest stories in the black church since 
the fall and the disgrace of Bishop Eddie Lee Long.